Hello everybody and welcome to VFR. Today we are here in uh, San Diego, California looking at the A2A Comanche for Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to go through a full flight check ride kind of guide to get you up and running in this airplane reasonably quickly. Uh, this is a very deep simulation of the uh, Comanche, maybe the deepest, I think and almost inarguably the deepest uh, GA simulation we have. So we're not going to cover everything, but we are going to get you started on a decent flight. Um, especially if you're new to this coming in from Xbox or something like that, where it was just, um, just updated for. So we're going to go through the whole walk around, um, and then all the basics of getting through a full flight in the Comanche and, uh, touch on some of the options. So let's hop in and get going, huh? All right. So here we're loaded into our cold and dark, uh, Comanche 8 Tango Victor. So we're going to go through real quick what's on the, the, um, tablet and then get ready for our walk around. So let's bring this up here. You can move the tablet around just by clicking and dragging, and it kind of nicely follows where you need to go. So um, this just tells you your version. It'll tell you if you need to update. And we're going to be using the uh, checklist portion of this flight info page. It also has some helpful weather here. Uh, controls. This is where we can control anything um, on the airplane. We can also control these things with the switches in the cab and or click spots. And there's multiple ways to do most of this stuff, but um, this is all where you would do that. We also can change your GPS options. So if you want no GPS or you said GTN 750, we're going to use the GNS 530 for this flight. We're not going to lean too heavily on it. Um, and then the only other important things I think for you to start out with are if you want your cockpit persistence or your persistence by livery, you want it to state save where you leave the airplane, the state you leave it in. That's what you need to have ticked. It's ticked by default. And then there's some advanced options around uh, if you have a gear switch, a three-way gear switch, or a two-way gear switch, the, the switch in the actual airplane, I believe, is three-way. But um, I have a two-way, so on the Honeycomb Bravo. Um, you can also change some of the sensitivities as well as the wear rate and failure rate. I run 5X. That seems to work pretty well for me. Fuel and payload is exactly what it says on the tin. We'll come back to this um, once we've finished our walk around and we're loading up. And then we have the maintenance um, page. So I've inspected this airplane. We have a new airplane, um, but let's just say we got it and you clicked used. Um, basically, if you notice a problem or if you want to see what the condition of your airplane is, you can inspect it and it'll show up with yellow, red, or green. Red is usually a showstopper or something you should, probably shouldn't fly with. Yellow, we can get away with. So our right brake pads are worn. They need to be replaced now or in the near future. You can click fix to, um, to fix it. Where I would recommend starting with a new airplane um, just for, to simplify things, uh, simplify the number of things floating around things we're uh, dealing with. But once you feel comfortable or if you feel comfortable used, um, just has some beat up components. Auction will have a wide range. It could be perfect. Um, or it could be, um, a lot. It could not be perfect. We have the same screen for the engine. This will show you all the things on the engine, all your cylinders and all the components that can fail. And we have an engine analyzer as well. This is pretty neat. It just shows you kind of the simulation state of the engine um, in a nice, clear visual um, representation. So it's a neat thing to watch and can help you diagnose, you know, what you're doing with your engine. And then finally, our electrical system, our battery is a little drained, but that's all right. And it brings us to the walk around. So this is what we're getting ready to do. And this is the first step of our flight. We're going to do our pre-flight. We're going to do our walk around and check everything out. So to get ready for the walk around, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to remove the control locks, hide the yoke, and then I'm going to turn on the master battery or the master switch here. And then I'm just going to turn on all my lights. So any lights that I can have will go on. And then the last thing that we need to do is to make sure one of these is set to the left or right main. So if they're both off here, our fuel valves, I'm going to turn one of those on so that you have... Um, so that we can check the fuel when we sump it. All right, so let's get started with the walk around with the right hand side. So here we're looking at our right flap right now. Basically, we want to um, play with these things, click and drag, um, and make sure that the flaps aren't moving and that we can test it and see that there's minimal play in the flap linkages. If something fails, if your flaps fail, uh, either you can move them easily um, or you'll hear, you know, you might hear different noises as well. So uh, be sure to pay attention to the noises, but the flap shouldn't move. So we move over to the ailerons and those should move relatively freely. 
Uh, we shouldn't hear any grinding or other strange noises. It should basically move like this. should be able to move it with your hand pretty comfortably. Again, if not, you might have something stuck. It might be jammed. Um, and that is not a good failure. Uh, makes it difficult to control an airplane. Moving along, we can uh, check our tip tanks here. I think we have eight gallons in, so we should see some blue stuff. That's gas. Uh, in the tanks, that's all we really need to see there. Uh, but then we go under to check our fuel. Um, it should all be this hazy blue kind of um, color. If you see a separate layer, that means there's something in your fuel that shouldn't be. And engines don't like to burn uh, things that are not fuel. So that can be a problem, especially if you're flying somewhere. So usually water would be the big thing. If you see a separate layer, you've got water. Um, or a different weird color would be bad. Just moving along, we've got our... Um, Landing lights here. I have them bound to um, taxi. Uh, basically, I have it bound so that the taxi and landing lights um, are, you know, taxi is the this side, the right side. Landing lights are on the left side. But you can do that however you want. But that's where that light is. Uh, here we just need to remove our tie downs. And then we can check our main tanks. So up here. Just click on the fuel cap. It should be about full. We've got 30 gallons in there. That looks about right. And then coming down, we can remove the wheel chocks. So open up the cover here. This is going to be checking your main fuel tanks. So you want to fill it up, make sure it's all blue. Again, no separate layers, no weird colors. It is. Now, if you do this and you um, don't get anything coming out, don't panic. Um, you probably just have to set up the um, turn on your fuel levers. So if that's the case, come in here and make sure that one of these is on the mains. While we're down here, we can also check our strobe light as well. Once we verify that the strobes are working, we can turn it off. Now coming up here, um, checking our prop. We want to make sure there's no damage to the prop as well as there's nothing in our intake cowling here. Uh, I have never experienced it, but I've seen images on the internet of people finding rags in here. So you have to click to remove anything that's in there. It's a good check because that will not help your the performance of your engine if something's uh, jammed in there. Next up, oil. Open the, the cover. We show we have a max of 12 um, quarts of oil. We want to make sure that it's not too far below down here. And it's also a nice... Ideally a nice light color. If it's very dark, you might want to consider changing your oil. And then we're going to repeat a lot of this for the um, left side. We're going to check and make sure that there is indeed fuel in the main tank. We're going to remove the wheel chocks. Uh, over here, we need to check our pitot heat. So we can remove the tie down and click to remove the cover. Now, if I grab the pitot tube here, uh, this is our airspeed sensor. And you'll see it's cold, as indicated by the blue. I've turned on the switch. Again, you can pop back into the cockpit if you need to. I have it bound to my hardware. So it's the sim equivalent of me yelling at the, um, the other guy we're flying with to turn it on. We click again. It should be red. That indicates that it has heated up. Turn that back off now. Other landing light is good. We can check the tip tank as well and go through the rest of this. Um, we're basically going to do the same checks that we did on this side to the other side. So to keep it moving, uh, we want to check our static port over here. There's one on both sides. We just want to make sure that it's clear. There's no debris or anything in there. It's not damaged. Coming around to the tail, we can remove the tie down. And then we can check the elevators. We want to make sure that the elevators can move relatively freely. Again, no grinding, no big, strange sounds. And that the rudder is not flapping around. If I move my pedals, you can see the rudder move. When I try to move with my hand, it should be relatively... Uh, relatively. It's not going to be as rigid as the flaps. But um, if you have the rudder flapping around, that means you don't have any rudder control. And that's, again, detrimental to your ability to control this airplane. Right, uh, static port, same thing on the right side. And now we're going to load bags. So let's open it up. Um, right now, they'll basically be, everything will be sitting out here. 
Uh, so we can look and see. You've got a day bag, a couple day bag suitcases for a longer trip. We're going to put the toolbox in and just a little satchel for our trip up to Ramona. It's not far. It's just going to be a day trip. We're going to come down at the end of the day. So we can close that up and hop back into the cockpit. We have completed the walk around. I'm going to turn off the lights, turn off the battery, make sure everything else is back off, and we'll start into our checklist. All right, so I like to use the checklist here. You can use whatever you want for your favorite um, Comanche uh, checklist, but I find that this one works out pretty well, and it's right here. So I like to put the iPad down here on the seat as well. Um, but we'll get started with that. Everything's off. Um, so our pre-flight is completed. Our passengers will be briefed. We're going to be flying here from Brownfield um, up through the uh, VFR cutout over San Diego International Airport, and then we're going to be flying up to Ramona Airport north of San Diego. VFR all the way. Uh, Seatbelt secure. Control locks are removed. That's our bungee cords. Parking brake pulled out and set gear switch down now the gear switch is the orange little toggle switch down there it is in the down position it is not as easy to see as on some more modern models uh, flaps are up i'm going to check that on my heart on my uh, controls as well as here um, if the flap this lever is back flaps are not forward or up radios are off autopilot master is off um, avionics are all off. All our electrical switches are off. Um, circuit breakers, which are mostly down here, you can see that's the starter. Um, if you see something popped out with white, that's a circuit breaker out. We need to make sure that we don't see any of that. And then the rotating beacon can come on. The nav light can come on. And we'll turn on the battery. We checked all this earlier, but you can see the rotating beacon going. That's a good sign we have some power. All right, so for our engine start, we want to make sure that we're on the desired tank. Again, we can set these to whatever we need, the left uh, aux, which is the tip tank, or the left main, which is what we're on. Um, you can also set both of them on. It will, in theory, drain them equally. But in real life, what I've read or and or heard is that pilots will keep them on the left and right so that you can more finely um, maintain the balance. Um, if you keep them both on, it won't necessarily drain on a real aircraft, and maybe on this one, uh, the same amount, so you lose that kind of control. So we'll run left and then run right for a while on the way up to Ramona. Uh, so we've got that on the desired tank. So now we're going to do our normal single-engine complex piston start. Mixture full forward, full rich, props full forward. We're going to crack the throttle just a little bit. Carb heat, we want to make sure that that is off, so this lever is pushed in. Master switch is on. We'll turn the fuel pump on to make sure we have fuel pressure. So watching down here, we want to make sure that this needle comes up and into the green. It'll take a second, but it does. That means the fuel pump is working, so we can turn that off. So the primer over here next to carb heat. Um, I use the mouse scroll wheel, so I scroll down, and then I'll usually start with three to four pumps on the primer. Two, three, four, and then scroll up on the mouse wheel to lock it in position. That's a little tricky with the with the control, but definitely doable. Next up, mags to both. And we'll do a clear prop here. Clear prop. Everything's clear around us. We can engage the starter. And um, so the starter's going to stay in. It's going to crank over. The engine's going to turn over, and it should fire up. This is a new airplane. Now, again, on an older airplane, on a used or auction airplane, you may have trouble getting it started. If it's really cold out, you may have trouble getting it started. That's why I chose San Diego in a new airplane. Uh, but there's a lot of nuance to that button press and how long you let it sit for, how long you let it run for, and what other things you can do to get started. That's really a, t a topic for a further video. For now, um, click the start until it, and crank it until it turns on and make sure that you have all this configured right. If it doesn't start, you can always add more primer. So we want to check that we have oil pressure, that it's in the green, solidly in the green, and um, that oil temperature will rise. 
Now that we're on the, now we've got it started up too, we want to lean out the mixture a fair amount just to avoid any uh, fouling of the spark plugs while we idle on the ground. All right, so that is the engine start. And again, this is a complex simulation, but it's really not a complex airplane. If you're used to flying complex single engine piston planes, um, it's all the same stuff. It's really the consequences that are fleshed out the most. All right, so our before taxi primer is locked. We can't um, pump it. Avionics Master can come on. That's going to be here. That'll turn on our GPS and our radios and our engine um, monitor. Also check this, we have two people in here. If you need to add a third or a fourth, you can check, do that as well. And you can also update the digital engine monitor from here with um, everything you, um, with your parameters. So while the GPS boots up, we'll talk about that next. Uh, ammeter, we want to check and make sure we have something other than zero, ideally positive. We're looking at about positive 20 amps there. Radios, uh, if they're not on, uh, like any good pilot, you turn them off. Turn that small dial here off of off and on to on, and that will work. Transponder, we're going to set it as required. We're going to squawk VFR and turn it on. Now our heading indicator on our HSI, now we need to align that. So we're looking up, we're facing pretty much due west here. Uh, but you'll see that this, our HSI, is not facing due west. It's not lined up. So we have to push this in to adjust the card to line up with our compass. And that's going to drift over time. So we'll have to realign that usually after every flight. So if you push it out, if, so if you turn this dial and the card moves, what you have to do, and you're, but you're trying to adjust heading, you have to pull the card out. Or pull that out with a click and then we can kind of rotate it around that way. So that is set up. Landing gear, we have a green, it's hard to see, but um, it looks faintly illuminated. Green light. Nav lights on, we can crank up the uh, brightness too if we need to. And then we can just do a quick brakes check. So bring brake off. Just make sure the brakes are working. That's a helpful thing. All right, we're ready to taxi. Um, I'm not going to put anything in the uh, GPS for this. I have a Navigraph flight plan, which I will share, and we'll go over real quick. Um, but uh, this is just a VFR flight, so I would pick any two airports you're familiar with VFR. Um, give yourself nice weather and, um, and fly between them. So we're going to be taking uh, two runway 26 right, Starting out towards the ocean and then flying up north uh, through San Diego. All right, so here is our flight plan. Uh, we are here at San Diego Brown Municipal, right on the border with Mexico. Um, the important thing here is that we don't turn left and go fly into Mexico. We want to turn right or basically fly straight out climbing and then turn right. And we're going to fly out, uh, oh, out over Imperial Beach, the naval outlying landing field turn right basically here at the lower end of the Bay of San Diego and then follow the coast all the way up over downtown and then over San Diego International Airport. Um, this is again a topic for a deeper video but this is a, the BFR corridor over San Diego one of the few places in the U.S. where you can fly over an international airport without a Bravo clearance or any kind of talking to ATC. So um, we're going to enter this um, and it's I believe the top altitude here is 4,600 feet. So we will be, we'll fly in at about 4,000 feet over here. So it's like a, um, and it's clearer on the FAA. It's not clear because it's complex, but we have basically this dual carve out. There's a Bravo from 2,800 feet to 3,300 feet and then 4,700 feet to uh, 10,000. So that's our little um, area where we can fly through. We'll fly up there up past uh, Miramar and then we'll make the right turn under that shelf out towards Ramona up in the mountains. Alright so we're ready to go and we would be pretty much ready for taxi now so let's roll on out. If you need to add just a little bit of power you can. And I'm going to turn on 
What I have labeled as taxi light, it's one of the landing lights. You can turn on both if you're really worried about being seen. Alright, so we're here um, just short of the runway, and what we're going to do is do a run-up. This is a good, um, this is good practice in any airplane, but in this one particularly, um, it's an, a, a very good check to make sure that, especially your engine is working right. Even in workups for this, um, for this video, making this video, um, I diagnosed or we had a, saw an issue. Uh, usually it's going to be good enough to tell you you have some kind of issue. Um, but basically we had a, um, a bad crankshaft that I didn't know um, was bad. So we weren't just, but when we were, did the run-up, didn't get any oil pressure, and we're running really high cylinder head temperatures, even at kind of the lower um, 2,000 RPM, which doesn't take off power. So clued me into the fact that there was a problem and we could fix it. So the run-up will catch things, um, and it's good to do, especially before this flight. So we're positioned into the wind. I'm holding on the brakes. Fuel quantities, uh, we're looking good. We got 30 gallons in both tanks, and in our aux tanks, we're about a little over half full. Uh, we're on the desired tank. We're going to take off on the left tank. So we're going to set our, we're going to rich up the mixture, and then we are going to use the throttle to set 2,000 RPM. This is your RPM gauge over here. Down here, you have your manifold pressure. And then you have our, we have our fuel flow gauge out here. Just about 20, doesn't have to be exact. Or 2,000 RPM. We want to make sure that nothing goes into the red, nothing spikes, nothing drops. We want to make sure that everything here is in the green. It looks like it is, so that's good. Uh, so next we can check our magnetos. Basically we're going to cycle through them. Um, this helps to have hardware, but you, you don't need it. We're looking for a max drop of 125 and a max difference between them of 50. So we're running to about 2,000 now. So we go down to the left mag. That's showing about 1,900, so that's good. Back to both, between. And then two clicks. They look about 1,900 and about the same. So that's good. That looks reasonable. Uh, now we're going to cycle the prop three times. All the way down. And all the way back up. Just make sure that nothing, again, goes out of the green. That the engine is still running. That nothing calamitous is happening. And finally, we're going to reduce the RPM to 1,800 using our prop lever. And we're just going to let that stabilize and make sure that that holds here. At this point, we can also check our car peat as well. Pull it out. And an important thing to note about um, these, we have these gauges here on the physical side. You can also see most of this information in your digital engine monitor. So each of these is cylinder head temperatures. Um, you have your manifold pressure and your RPMs, as well as your fuel flow, your endurance, your battery voltages, most stuff. So there's the duplication of most things. If you want to look at the engine monitor, uh, you can for a more precise view. That all looks pretty good. We're gonna bring throttle back going to bring prop full forward again and we're going to get ready for takeoff. So before takeoff checks, controls, free and correct, we want to move these back, move these back and again it's good to make sure that um, we look and make sure that our control surfaces are actuating because that can and will fail. Elevator trim, our trim is up here, we want to be in about neutral. That looks good. Rudder trim, as required. That's fine for now. Door. 
We've got it latched. If it's not latched, you'll hear some wind noise. Fuel selector on the left tank. Fuel pump on. Mixture full, rich. Prop full, forward. Carb heat is off. Pedo heat is going to be on. It's not, it's pretty warm out, but we'll turn it on. Strobes on. And then we'll light up as we're lining up on the runway. So to talk through the takeoff process right now, we're going to go throttle full open. We're going to check to make sure our airspeed comes alive, our engine gauges, nothing blows up, nothing goes out of the green. And we're going to rotate around 85 miles an hour. We're going to get positive rate, gear up. We'll bring flaps up if we're taking off. Now we've got plenty of runway, but usually I'll take off with one notch of flaps. Um, airspeed, we're going to set our best climb of V105, 105 miles an hour, and uh, make sure we have an emergency landing area, which is going to be probably the uh, the military field out in front of us. So let's get ready to go. All right, so I'm going to bring the throttle fully forward. Should end up around 30 inches of manifold pressure at sea level. Our brakes should hold it. And we're basically going to fly runway heading and then climb up to 1,500 feet and make a right-hand turn. So we're rolling. Airspeed is alive. That's 80 miles an hour. We'll pull back. It doesn't take a whole lot going like this. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. Flaps up. And away we go. Now, once we're up and established, getting up to 1,000 AG, I'm going to start bringing the power back off the max and bring the prop back to 2,400 RPM or so. It's about 25 inches manifold pressure, 2,400 on the RPM. And again, we're aiming to climb out somewhere around 105 knots. I'm also going to lean up in my seat just a little bit. We are flying this flight completely visually today. So I'm going to make the slight right turn, and we're just going to climb up to our altitude of about 4,000 feet to transit the San Diego-class Bravo airspace, or to transit through it, under it, but not in it. Off our right, you can see downtown San Diego. Uh, San Diego International Airport is going to be just across it, uh, Point Loma out there. And we're going to fly basically right over um, Naval Air Station North Island. So as you climb out, we can start to lean out the mixture just a little bit. I tend to watch the engine, uh, the digital engine monitor, see what the... the what, how much power we're generating. Just trying to keep it a little bit rich a peak. This looks about 81 in this configuration. And also just slightly increasing the throttle as we climb to maintain about 25 inches. That's 3,500 feet now. So we're going to start to level off. Um, you can trim all your normal stuff. If you want to hand fly, you can. We're going to go over the autopilot right now. So I'm going to set up my heading bugs so that we're ready to go when we're ready. We're going to turn basically due north at San Diego Bay, which we're about to pass under over. Now the autopilot, um, to turn it on, we have to first hit this switch here. You'll see the autopilot and slash turn coordinator system here light up. Once the lights go out, it's ready to go. So we can click this button here. Or once the green light ready comes on, it's ready to go. So we can click this button here, and you can go over here. That'll just hold whatever you were doing. That will hold heading. So if you're looking for heading, there's also a track mode. Now, if we wanted to hold our altitude, which we do, we're at about 4,300 feet, so we can descend just a little bit. I'm going to pull power. 
I'm going to get us turned the right direction and then pull power a little bit. Before we bust the Bravo. But basically, for the altitude, we uh, attain the altitude we want to hold, and then we turn on altitude, engage, disengage. Now, this is actually on the yoke here. It's a panel here. Uh, but if it's not, if you hide the yoke, there's uh, it adds the panel in here. So let's get down. And we'll just engage it here, or 4200. So turn that on, and now it will hold that heading or hold that altitude for you. So now we're in heading and altitude hold mode. That may can also hold your your VOR course too, if you need to. Now it's beeping at me with this. This says it needs to trim down. So I need to I need to control the trim. I need to give nose down trim until this stops yelling at me. It does not automatically trim the airplane like some other um, aircraft. So it's a little bit different than what you're probably used to as an autopilot, but still perfectly capable of following whatever you need it to follow. So coming up on San, downtown San Diego, here we're actually a little bit to the right, of, to the left of where I want to be. We should be coming up the right of San Diego Bay, right over the coast. So out over the port of San Diego, I have an add-on to add these ships in, but it's a big Navy base um, out here. North Island Naval Air Station. They did some Top Gun filming there. Downtown San Diego, and then San Diego International Airport, the busiest single runway international airport in the US, is right here. And we're gonna basically fly right over it. So we're gonna kinda hang out, fly over downtown, and then stick around. It's yelling at me, I need some up, nose up trim. And so now we're in kind of a, a, a gentle VFR autopilot heading mode. So over downtown, we're going to basically turn more or less due north. 355 or so till we hit the highway out here running north south at which point we're going to turn left kind of for the coast out here over Mount Soledad so it's a fun little VFR route again you should just pick whatever VFR route you're familiar with and you want to fly between two airports you can I mean this plane is certainly fully IFR capable so in the cruise, um, again, it's pretty uh, standard single engine prop. We can adjust our mixture to maximize our power by leaning it out as we get higher. And then for our settings, uh, if you want kind of a 75% power or a max power, I usually go 24 and 24. Uh, the manual that comes with the airplane has the full list of everything, all the different configurations that you might want to do. So that's what we're running now. We can usually do 170 miles an hour pretty pretty easily. This is not a air, uh, fast airplane, of course. That's about 140 knots, ultimately. Off our right, uh, there's um, Miramar, Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. A lot of good fighter jet um, watching opportunities out in San Diego. It's a really, a really fun, interesting place to fly if you're looking for somewhere to fly. Do some VFR. There's some really great sceneries um, I didn't mention, but I will link them in the description below um, for a ton of great, um, great sceneries available on flightsim.to. So you can see our next visual waypoint here, uh, the Del Mar racetrack. That's where we're going to make our turn to the right. Uh, approximately, if my navigraph is saying, heading 030, um, and we'll fly that for uh, about five miles, and we'll make the turn up to head inland towards Ramona, which is up in the mountains a little bit. So once we're over top that, we can make that right-hand turn. So 
So one thing, um, this is a lot better than when it first came out, but if the um, if there's too much noise, if you don't want to hear so much engine noise, um, you can turn on your headphones here, um, and it'll give you a little plug, which is it's a cool, um, it is a pretty cool um, little touch that they add there. Uh, but it'll quiet up some of the engine noise and deaden that a little bit. You can also, there's some um, wing root fairings and soundproofing that you can do to reduce that as well. Again, it was uh, more impactful when it first came out. Nowadays, it's uh, much more reasonable. Although, probably less, you know, realistic. I'm sure this airplane is very loud in real life to fly in. We're going to head heading through to 030 now. Making the turn up towards Ramona. All right, so as we're getting ready to come into Ramona here, um, we're going to go over our um, approach checklist real quick. I'm going to turn off the autopilot. We can stay below 4,500. Uh, at this point, it might also be good, but who us to contact Ramona Tower uh, with some kind of transmission that, like uh, Ramona Tower, Comanche Gate Tango Victor, about 10 to the west of the field, uh, requesting full stop landing at Ramona. So I'm going to start a, I'm going to start pulling back power, a few things are going to happen. Start pulling back power, um, and then start descending towards the field. You can see the runway right here. We're going to enter into a downwind for a runway 27 out there. Um, but we're basically just going to enter straight on the downwind. Um, fuel pump, we want to make sure that's on. Um, should turn it off for crews, I often forget, I will admit. Um, we have to replace the fuel pump more often if you do that. Uh, fuel levels, we're, uh, we burned about 10 gallons, 5 gallons, so we're going to switch over to the right tank here. Just to burn a little bit of that. Uh, fuel switch is set, uh, fuel levers are checked, and uh, mixture, we'll start richening up with the mixture as we descend in. Now, once we're in the pattern, we're going to go finish the rest of this, but prop full forward, carb heat as required, not really required today. Get the airspeed down to 120 knots, and then get the gear down. Now, this airplane can be slippery and will be kind of fast if you don't control it on approach and final. So just try to stay ahead of the airplane a little bit. Try and not let you keep too much... Um, don't keep too much power in, come racing in at 180 knots and expect to do an overhead break and make a nice, clean landing here. We're descending, in fact, a little bit later than I would like, so I'm going to kick it out here to the right, enter 45 to the downwind, and just give us a little bit more space and time to work with. Um, Ramona is at about uh, 1,395 feet, so about 1,400 feet. So we'll be looking for a pattern altitude of around 2,400 feet. You know, we're descending through 3,000 now. You notice that I don't have very much power in, and we're still at 160 knots. Um, so again, just make sure you're staying ahead of the airplane if you get high and fast um, on your final approach and try and shove it down, the airplane's not going to be happy with you. You probably will manage it, but it won't necessarily be graceful. So at 2,800 feet now, we'll try and aim for 2,500. Got that just a little early, but we're doing good getting speed off. So coming up on about 2,500 feet now. Speed is good. Our max gear down speed is 150, so we're we're good there. We can use that to help us manage our speed a little bit if we need to. We can also stop descending, which will help. So I'm going to set us up in the downwind. We can even add a little bit of power back in. And again, we're aiming for about 120 knots. So I'm going to go gear out. Put in the first notch of flaps. And just try to maintain this um, a little bit. So 
generally between 15 and 20 inches in the manifold pressure. Um, we can go full prop full forward, mixture full rich. Fuel pump is on. I'm a little close, but that's all right. And I will um, say straight up that I am not the master of landing the command sheet. This airplane, the flight model, you know, it feels good. Um, but if you're out of position, it's not going to um, it's not going to make you look good. And it may not make me look good today. We'll see. Thankfully, I don't do these to look good and smart. There's a do as I say, not as I do element to all this. So we're going to keep uh, that going. And I'm, you know, I'm resisting some temptation to put a little more power in. We want to be, you know, at around 100 knots coming down. Um, your landing checklist, uh, we want to make sure that we're gear is down. We've got a green light. Again, it's hard to see the flaps going down. And an airspeed of around 90 miles per hour. We're a bit high. We want to keep descending now. And remember that you can always go around. I'm just going to add a little bit more flaps as we turn base to final here. And we're going to overshoot just a bit. But that's not the worst thing. See, we're a bit high and a bit fast. We may not make this one. We'll see. Not a very good lineup either. But again, 100 knots. No, I just didn't give myself enough space to get established. So this is an example of where you probably could, if you're being honest with ourselves, force it around, force it down. But we just weren't where we needed to be. So gear up, flaps up, we're going around. We'll get back in the pattern and try it again. All right, so we're set up again out here in the downwind, about 2,400 feet. I'm giving ourselves a little bit more space for a, bit, a little bit longer base leg. And we're going to go through the same thing, prop out. We can bring the flaps in, first stage of flaps, and gear down. Get configured, let the speed come back to 120. Then we'll bring the power back. Just keep it coming down. We want to manage our descent rate to help us manage our speed. I'm going to go two notches here. We begin a wider base turn. So feeling a little bit better. We'll see. I'm going to go full flaps now. And we're feeling much more under control. See here, we're rolling out. We're a little off, but... 100 miles an hour. Go 10 to dump. And now we're just going to manage the descent rate a little bit. And glide it on in. And again, this is an airplane that I think, like a lot of realistic add-ons, it rewards you for being in the right spaces at the right times, although we're getting a little fast again, too. So if you can stay ahead of it and stay in the right space at the right times, that's good. We might even want a little carb heat if it was icy. There's 100 knots. There's about 90. Just add a little flare. And here we are. Welcome to Ramona. We're going to uh, keep a little bit of power in, actually. Taxi on down to the next um, turnoff. And we'll taxi on over to Transient Parking.
All right, so we've made it down here in Ramona. We're parked up at the Trans Am parking ramp. We've got flaps up on the other things to check. We can turn off lane lights, uh, other lights, pedo heat can come off as well. And now we can go in to do our shutdown. So um, all we gotta do is deprive the engine of fuel. So I'm gonna pull the mixture back. Pull it cuts. Drop all the way out too. It should come to a graceful stop. We can turn the magnetos off. Parking brake on. Fuel pump off. Once you're done, avionics master can come off too. I don't want to go park. And to um, close up the airplane, we'll generally turn fuel off. And then we can go through the rest of it. Um, so the checklist, parking brake set, radios off. Um, it's good practice to turn this off too. Transponder off. And if you have your, you know, your persistence set up, that would those settings would, you know, carry over to your next flight. Master switch off, throttle closed, mixture idle cut off, magnetos off, control wheel, secure locked, doors and windows. They're going to open because I got to get out. And we'll uh, secure the tie downs here too. We're going to be here for a little bit. We're doing a hundred dollar hamburgers kind of thing. We'll put on the pedo cover and the tie downs. So there you go. That's a pretty, um, a pretty straightforward, fun VFR flight in the A2A Comanche. It's a really cool airplane. Um, if you haven't got it, if you're um, you're on the fence about it, especially now that it's on Xbox, I'm really impressed that they're able to bring it to Xbox and the marketplace. So that's awesome. It's an awesome um, add-on. There's a lot of depth. This really scratches the surface at a very amateur level. So um, definitely one that you can have a lot of fun with. Um, go, it's my go-to single-engine GA prop, and um, I think it's a lot of people's. So really, a really um, great airplane by A2A and a really fun um, airplane to fly. And we may do some more, we may dig into some more of the details of it, um, but that's what I would more or less recommend for a first flight, just to take a, find your two favorite airports, do a quick VFR flight between them. So that's it for watching. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, comments, uh, anything else, leave them in the comments section below, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff helps the channel out. Um, and we'll, we'll see, we're looking to explore with some VFR flying and some other things here on the channel in the near future. So stay tuned for all that. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, y'all.